Hey, welcome to the crux. In this video, we're going to start our discussion on transcription. And in particular, we start by looking at the prokaryotic transcription. So transcription is the process of genetic information conversion or transfer from the coding region of the DNA to a messenger RNA. In a given piece of DNA, for instance, a gene, you have the coding region which contains information about the protein it codes or a functional RNA it codes, like the ribosomal RNA. And the start of this coding region is usually referred to as the transcription start site, or TSS for short. And the first base of the coding region is called the plus one position for reference to everything else around it. And at the end of the coding region, we have the stop site which marks the end of the coding region. Now, from our reference set at the TSS, we call all things towards the end of the coding region downstream. And likewise, all the things before the plus one site are considered upstream. One important piece of DNA that is located upstream of the TSS is the promoter region. And promoter is involved in promoting or initiating the process of transcription. And once transcription is initiated, it continues along the coding region in a process called elongation. And then it terminates at the stop signal. So you could divide the entire process of transcription into three steps. Since transcription is initiated via the promoters, we should first discuss about the organization of the promoter DNA. So consider this double-stranded DNA, and let's mark our reference at TSS, which is the first base of the coding region. And then downstream of the plus one site, you have the plus two, plus three. And on the upstream site, you have negative one and negative two sites. And you can continue writing this notation for all bases in both directions. And you should note that there is no site zero. Now in our promoter region, which is the upstream of the TSS, we have three main promoter elements. The distal, or the farthest, is the UPE element, upstream promoter element, which is at about negative 58 to negative 37 position. Then we have the negative 35 element, which is located at around negative 35 to negative 30 position. Then you have the most common promoter element, the negative 10 element, located at the negative 12 to negative 7 position. It is also known that the optimal spacing between the negative 35 and the negative 10 element is around 17 bases. Sometimes the negative 35 element or the negative 10 elements are not available in the promoter of some genes. In those cases, you can find an extended negative 10 element at the position negative 17 to negative 14. And then there are some genes that carry a discriminator promoter element, which is usually three bases in length. As you may have already read it, the negative 10 element is also sometimes called the Pribnow box or the Pribnow Scheller box. In the eukaryotes, its homolog can be thought of as the Tata box, also known as the Goldberg Hognes box. Functionally speaking, the UPE element is frequently contacted by the RNA polymerase, which is the enzyme responsible for making RNA, and its binding to the UPE stabilizes it. The UP is commonly found in the promoter of ribosomal RNA genes. Then the negative 35 element, extended negative 10, and the negative 10 elements are contacted by the sigma factors, which are responsible for the transcription initiation process. Finally, the discriminator element is also bound by the sigma factors. And because sigma factors are bound to the RNA polymerase, the discriminator element helps stabilize the polymerase. When looking at the sequence structure of each of these elements, they have some underlying consensus sequences. For instance, UPE has a long consensus. The W's and N's that you see in the sequence are IUPAC symbols. Check out the link in the description to learn about their meaning. The negative 35 has TTGACA as its consensus sequence. The extended negative 10 has TRTG as its consensus and the negative 10 element has TATAAT as its consensus. And then the discriminator is usually just a G triplet. So you should keep in mind that the consensus sequence are just an average representation of the sequence expectation. This means that 
Just because you have a consensus sequence does not mean that it is always like that in all genes, and therefore it can change. A way to get consensus is to align a particular portion of DNA and compute the per base average in that alignment, and that gives you a consensus. To show you what I mean, consider the negative 10 element, whose consensus, as we just said, is T-A-T-A-A-T. But that is only true because it is bound by sigma factor D, also known as sigma 70 or RPOD. And because sigma D factor binds most of the genes in prokaryotes, the consensus of T-A-T-A-A-T is biased towards it. But when you look at the negative tail element sequence of certain sigma H bound genes, and these are usually the heat shock genes, you find a completely different consensus. So there are different sigma factors involved in the promoter binding, and I have a link in the description if you want to read more about them. Now, depending on the promoter sequence, the promoters can either be strong or weak, that is, the measure of how many transcript they can produce in a given time. The strong promoters usually match their respective consensus fairly well, and weak ones deviate. One last thing about promoters you should know is that their sequence composition can cause DNA to form curvatures or bends. This is important because the proteins like sigma factors that bind them have to unfold these DNA sequence. And torsion or bend created by these sequence helps these proteins effectively do their job. So that is all for the introduction of bacterial promoters. 